Now, there's a lot of ways of borrowing force. Another way is that I'm going to turn Cliff to this side. Cliff, put your uh, left leg back for me. Put your guard up. <coughs> I can also use the blades open now. We're still borrowing force. Cliff has decided to lunge with the left hand. All right, now, I can meet it right at the fingers. I can also meet the blade, blade to blade, providing that your knife has hilt. This takes a lot of practice, and the odds of you connecting blade to blade is pretty difficult at best. If you practice this long enough, you can get good at it. But there again, if you miss, all you've succeeded in doing is cut yourself. Now, what I want you to do on this is I want you to step off again, just like in a technique we call reversing mace. And as Cliff comes through, we're going to parry right at the wrist. At this point, I want you to cut right on top, just behind the elbow. And you're going to follow this contour right here, because you want to sever this area right here. Because if you sever this, it will also send a message here to drop that. But there's no guarantees that you cut deep enough, so you make sure that both blades do that. Now, the hilt also, if he pushes down, gives me some protection. Without the hilt, you can slip in and cut me. All right, now watch again. As I move off, slip, I can let this slip through and right to the throat. And as I cut, and I'm going to bring him on this side so you guys can see what I'm doing. As I come across the arm and I go under the throat, the top part of my knife is going to cut. And then I'm going to anchor down, and I'm going to cut on the way back. And you'll notice that the top part of the knife fits the hinge of the jaw. And what this allows me to do is cut going in and cut going back. This type of cut also causes, turn just a little bit for them, causes me, allows me to check, rather, his depth zones, his height. This helps me control his width of the other hand. If he tries to turn into me, I've got some control up here. Now, if you watch this, as he moves off, right up to the cut, you notice that I circle it, and meet it under the throat, and cut back this way. At this point, I'm going to trap this left hand, and as I trap it to control the right side of his body, I want you to take your left leg, move up the circle, reach around, catch him again. Now, as I cut again, you're going to apply pressure here, and you're going to step back with your right leg into a left neutral bow, but don't spin him towards you, spin him towards the ground as you cut again, and guide him down with the other hand. Okay, come on up, Cliff. Now, thank you, Cliff. What I'm trying to show you is what you can do, but I'm also showing you what can be done to you if somebody knows what they're doing with knives. Now, I don't care if it's a little pocket knife. If you have this type of knowledge, you can make it use, useful for you in a situation where it may mean your life. OK, now, Cliff, let me borrow you again. Put your uh, right leg back. OK, switch. Okay, now what I'm going to do, since we borrowed force already with the blade tucked, and we borrowed force with it this way, okay, I want to actually borrow his force this way. We're going to hook it. All right, this is an open-end triangle, which is a very important concept and principle in the Kempo system. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to learn to use my blade to hook. If Cliff lunges for me down low, then I'm going to step off. And notice that when I step, I hook. But I don't want to hook it right into me, so I use my left hand as a guide and a check. Now watch again. Now as this checks, if I pull hard enough, it'll rip it right out of his hand. This way. Put it back up, Cliff. We'll just let it go as I pull. Ready? Boom. And we'll pull it right out of his hand. Let's do it again. It's, dis it's a disarming technique. Your timing has to be right on the money as you grab it and hook it out. All right, but that doesn't sit, do anything for the left hand. OK, I'm going to grab the knife. Now, as I move off, I'm also moving further from the left blade. OK, I'm moving up the, up the circle and into, if you've already studied Kempo, a zone of sanctuary. Now, as I move up, and I trap and try to rip it out of his hand, I can also start to contour the arm now. And let's say that we'd managed to rip it out of his hand. We can then travel up the wrist, 
the back side of the tricep and the back side of the forearm and make, and make another cut. But as I do this, what I want you guys to do is continually move up the circle and as one cuts, another one checks. At this point, you can just run it right up to his throat. And if you look at it from this angle, that when I disarmed it and I started to move up here, this checked right at the elbow because I don't want to be below it because the elbow can still move in. I don't want to be above it because the hand can get free. But get right on this elbow. As I cut along the arm, I push with my knee too and then slip right up to his throat at this point. Again, it's no guarantee I can take the back of the knife and cut him this way, as well as cut him with both blades. Okay, now, at this point, in this particular technique, there's no guarantee he's still going to be off his feet. So that's where you take the butt of the knife. If you need a knockout point, you can hit him with the butt of the knife and imagine what that would do. The point I'm making now is, is just because you cut somebody in a knife fight does not mean that they're down yet. Even if you cut their throat, the carotid artery, it or if you even if you cut into the lungs. The point is, you may need a point where you have to reverse the knife and hit him with all that metal to knock him out. Okay, I want you to think about that. We'll be back in a